Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be doing an unboxing. What do we have? We got the Mono Price Select. So, uh, Chuck Hellebuck got me in trouble again. So, I'd seen he had got one of these, and it really looks to be a neat little printer. So, uh, I ordered one. Uh, again, for about 200 bucks, and I'll have a link down below for it. Um, it's a fully assembled printer. It's, it's approximately 4.7 inches by 4.7 inches build area, but I think about the same vertically so which is bigger than the fab mini and it quite frankly looks cooler than the fab mini so um i got one so let's let's take a quick look what do we got so you're kind of seeing the box the box is kind of kind of large so it's about 17 inches tall it's uh about 14 inches wide and probably about 10 inches deep you can see that. So, uh, not a bad size box. So, um, I'm going to tip this over and I'm going to cut it open. And I figure you can see inside the box and then what I'll do is I'll, on the floor, I'll take it outside the box and then put it back up on the bench so you can kind of see. But let's see what's in, in the box because you're looking right in the box as I'm opening it. And so we open this up and voila! There is another box. Let's remove that box. So there's a shipping box with inside the shipping box. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and take this out, and by magic, I'll be right back. Okay. Hopefully, you didn't miss me very much while I was gone. So uh, it appears to be a box in a box. It's the MP200 3D printer by Mono Price. It's got a nice barcode. So let's open this box up. It's sort of like a Russian egg thing. Box inside a box. Whoa, look at this. This plastic bag with something in it. So it looks like some kind of manual. We are, we are fully dedicated to 100% satisfaction of our product and customer service. Okay, so that's a good thing. Uh, and it looks like I'm going to have to take it out of the box sort of sideways because it looks like a big foam crate so let me go ahead and do that okay so you can see we have the top of the box uh, it does come with a little sample looks like clear PLA uh, which is interesting in the comments on Amazon it said it didn't come with anything but it's not that it's really worth anything but it's interesting to mention uh, then we have this brown box of parts. I'm assuming that this is the power supply. So let's take a look. Yep, uh, definitely the power brick. Now the interesting thing is there's no cord in the box for the power brick, so I'm hoping it's inside there. So let's set that aside. So let's go for the major unveiling. There we go. Now there seems to be another box in the underside, so let's hope the other side of our power cord is in there. Um, it is. So we have a few pieces. It looks like our spool holder, um, our USB cable, our removal tool are, is all in there. Uh, and here we go. Here's the printer. I, I you know, I got to say for 200, 200 US dollars shipped to me, this is an amazing little printer. I mean, look at how cool this looks. Now, I spent about the same for the Fab Mini, about 200 bucks. I know it's a little bit cheaper now on Hobby King, I think. I was looking at it, it's now down to 177, but still for 200 bucks. This is all metal. This has got a nice LCD screen touch control, larger bed, I think nicer print head. Um, pretty nice. I'm so far impressed for the money just out of the box of what this looks like and in, in, in the quality. Again, for this much metal and everything else. So uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and get this out of the box and set it up on the uh, bench and we'll take a closer look at it. So Let's go over here, take a look. Okay, so we've now pulled it out of the foam, so uh, we got it sitting up, so you're looking at the top of it. One of the pieces I wanted to show you guys is the uh, extruder. So uh, this is all plastic, and, and there's a lot of tension on the spring, so there's a lot of tension on this plastic arm, which is kind of scary. So uh, uh, the plastic arm, actually, you have to put so much tension to release the pressure of the wheel. Um, 
is probably a little bit of a weak point, but again, you spent 200 bucks, you're not going to get an all metal extruder. So, this will probably be something I upgrade in the future. It is rather, rather small, uh, a rather small extru extruder. I'll spit it out uh, too. Obviously, it's a Bowden type. The other piece that looks interesting that I'll hit on is the, uh, I'll tip this back, I don't want to hurt, damage the bed. Uh, as you can see here, the fan assembly. So it, it's kind of got a unique design. It's got 130 millimeter fan, and it both acts as a layer fan and as a cooling fan for the uh, heat sink uh, on the cold side of the hot end. So that's a rather interesting design. I've actually thought about doing something very similar for the tarantula, but um, you know, after really think, but the the problem with this is going to be, and I, I'm. Uh, thinking is this fan's going to have to run all the time to cool the heat sink um, and you don't want it running all the time on your layer fan so I'm not sure that that's the best design so potentially maybe another modification down the way but we'll see um, but that's one of the reasons I didn't try this idea on the tarantula so that's there now the bed is let me make sure I got this in frame here so let's move this so the bed is a little, a little over five inches, about five and an eighth or so. And then it's about six and a quarter this way. Now, the bed does not move the full length of the bed. So it appears it moves pretty, pretty much around five inches. Now, according to what I read in the specifications, it's 4.7 by 4.7. And that pretty much looks like what it is, although, uh, the end looks like it goes right to the edge of both sides. So it might get pretty, could maybe get up to about 5 inches, I don't know. So we'll, we'll see, but uh, rated at 4.7 uh, by 4.7. So pretty nice design. I got this spool holder on the side here. Uh, this is kind of a, just a nice nifty little design. There's even little ears on it to prevent it from going too close to the machine. Nice forethought. As you can see, it feeds nicely up into the extruder. Again, it's a Bowden based extruder, and they have all this on there. So uh, the bed and stuff moves pretty freely. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, it looks like some kind of protective tape on here. I have I'm not really sure yet, so I haven't gotten into removing that or if there's a, a cover. There might be a, a cover that or a printing surface that goes on there. I didn't see one in any of the bags. Um, so anyways, let's uh, let's real quickly, just for grins and giggles. Oh, I want to show you on the back. So there's the power input on the back, and then there's the power switch, which is a nice touch. So um, let's turn this off, and let's just power this up and see what happens uh, if we put power to it and make sure it starts. Now, I read a couple reviews on the Amazon site that people had a few problems, thermosistor wiring coming off, and... Um, you know, not major stuff I, that I would consider major stuff for somebody who's not familiar with 3D printing and just the regular hobbyist maker movement and the soldering iron it might be. Um, and that's why I would not recommend, unless, you know, you want to use a soldering iron and all that kind of stuff to get into 3D printing, because I still think it's still got a little bit of a ways to go. So, fire's up. Uh, you can probably see a little bit of it there, so I'll tip it back no connection now one of the other things i read is that uh, you can flash this to you use uh to work with wi-fi so I, I found that rather interesting when i read through that and so again so we move so let's um let's move the y-axis so i don't know if you can see that but the y-axis is moving up. So let's... Home, you can see it's from the top. It's not that, that impressive from the top, but I just I just home the axis. Axes. It would be nice if it was a touch screen. Um, okay, so, so the Z is going down. I was a little bit worried about that touches off nicely so I have to align that but that all seems to work so that's a good thing you know so it just did its little last jog I think that was its last jog 
and we exit and move temperature. So looks like three main pieces here. So I'll tip this back so you can see that I don't want to make sure I don't break the plug. So you got print, temperature, move, and you can go between the two of them. So again, I was in the move menu. So you got Y, X, Y, Z, extruder, home, and exit. It's a little bit hard to see as you move through these. Um, and again, you can set the temperature. And it's got a preheat function. I love the color LCD display. Um, SD card is empty. So there's SD card. Oh, and the side here, uh, it has for an SD card, you put a micro SD card the way it looks, and a micro USB into the side. So that's all interesting. Um, move this over again I for, for the money I'm very impressed um, I gotta say you know given this or the fab mini I think this would definitely win uh, this is far more sturdy and impressive um, of a printer so anyways that's that's the unboxing of this uh, hopefully you found it interesting I'm gonna do more videos on this and one of the reasons I bought it is it's rather open platform uh, so it should be good for doing videos and, you know, printing um, smaller, larger parts, if that makes sense. So one of the things with the Fab Mini is it's just too small. Um, so I want to be able to print small, smaller, smaller things, but not real small things. So, you know, when we look at something, you know, when I want, if I want to go say here's you know this magnifier so if I want to go something about this size see I can print about that size now that's too big for the fab mini but this fits perfectly here and I think this is a great trade-off in size um, you know dollar size and everything else because for example like my um, uh, echo uh, stand that I printed it's too big for the mini but it would fit perfect on here. So uh, again, I think this this fits a, a, a niche far better than the Fab Mini does. I think the Fab Mini is great. Uh, I originally bought it to, to take to school for my grandson. Unfortunately, time-wise, that never got to happen, and he's now out of kindergarten in that. Uh, so, you know, if you're going to do something like that, I think it's cool because it's got the translucent body, and you can see all the electronics and stuff. And I think kids would get a kick out of it. But I think, again, if you're going to use this yourself, um, just inside your home in different projects, this, is, this, this one's the way to go. So... Um, I'm going to print some stuff on it, and we'll come back and we'll take a look at some of this in another video. And hey, hopefully you found this interesting. Stay tuned. I'm going to have a lot more on the uh, Monoprice Select here. And uh, subs thumbs up, subscribe. See you in the next one. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.